So let's check out some stuff on the Toyota Tacoma. And this isn't specific to the new Tacoma. Real quick though, this is the 2024 TRD Off-Road. Now, there are several things that I guess you should check once in a while and I try to force myself to do this because frankly, I don't like checking any of these things. I wish uh, they all would just stay the same and you didn't have to worry about it. But nonetheless, if you want to keep your truck running well, keep the Tacoma tip top, you probably should check these things, I'd say about once a month. Let's get to it. Okay, first thing is tire pressure. Now, I do have aftermarket tires, uh, so you're not going to be able to depend on the card that's on your door area or inside the door jam. Let's take a look at what it says. I am curious. It says here, uh, front, rear, and spare, all at 32 PSI. Now, that's cold pressure, of course. You want to make sure that you check this when it's cold. By the way, we do have one of these little tags down here. This says modifications on this vehicle have reduced original load carrying capacity by two pounds. So if you're concerned and you have one of these little yellow tags, that's what it's for. They put some uh, accessories on, I guess, that increased or decreased the capacity by two pounds, who cares? Now, what I do, and these are, let's see, I never can remember off the top of my head, make sure I give you the right number. These are a 285-65 R18. And I keep them usually between 35 and 37 PSI. I guess 36 is where I try to stay. So let's check one. Should be dead on, I think. And it is. Look at that. It is at uh, right about 36 PSI. So that's cool. Let's run around and, uh, and check the rest. I'm curious to see if... Uh, they're where they're supposed to be and you know depending on weather changes temperatures stuff like that obviously that affects tire pressure this one is a little bit above it's about 36 and a half but anyway temperature uh, will make this vary sometimes wildly and if you get a, a cold front come through or some kind of different pressure system uh, it can also affect of course tire pressure so that one is dead on 36 one more so that's a good time to check it I guess if you get a major storm come through which we've had a lot of this year we just had one come through South Texas a couple of days ago so that's kind of what uh, spurred me on to do this I guess let's take a look here and that one is right dead on at 36 too so Everything looks good to me. If you're uh, really motivated, you can crawl underneath and check the spare. Uh, I am not that motivated, so that's not going to happen for me. Now, let's pop the hood. We are going to take a look at the air filter over there, by the way. I have not done that yet, so I'm curious to see uh, where that actually is. Under the hood, I'd just like to take a look. Hopefully nothing is crawling around under here. We have snakes and rats and lizards and all kinds of good stuff. Let me grab a rag here. And tight fit. We do want to check the oil. I haven't done that in a while. Uh, before I do that, probably not a bad idea to grab a flashlight. Kind of helps to see a little bit in these uh, plastic containers but here we have coolant um, it's obviously full uh, it's pink uh, you can see there here we have uh, what is this brake fluid power steering fluid uh, power steer steering is uh, electronic now so I doubt we have any power steering fluid but you can see here if you just shine the light down through the container it's at the max level that's good washer fluid um, Looks like the max level is here, uh, and I can't tell. Yeah, we could actually add a little bit there, so I'll do that. Um, I just use, you know, whatever, nothing uh, real specific there. And then it never hurts to just take a quick look at the battery, make sure you don't have any 
corrosion or anything around I'm not going to pop that one up because it fits down there nicely now with my aux beam switch uh, but it looks good I don't see anything wacky and nor should I I mean it's basically a brand new truck so now the oil obviously you want to pull the dipstick uh, I have not checked the oil in this truck yet I don't think let's see what we've got just from where it is right now looks to be in the full range you've got a couple of dots here it should be in between hopefully right up at the top dot of course the oil is very clean the truck is like I said basically brand new so after you wipe it off I'm gonna stick it in there again I know this is simple stuff but you know some people may have their first vehicle their first Tacoma or whatever and uh, are unfamiliar with this stick it in pull it back out try to keep it from scraping the tube but that's about impossible and let's see we are just a little bit below no if I flip it the other way we're dead on on that dot right there so it looks good to me as again it should be brand new truck unless they did something wrong at the factory or the dealership shouldn't have any problems make sure you fasten that all the way down uh, and that's uh, it Next, we're going to take a look at the air filter on the inside because I'm not even sure how it works in the new truck. All right, let's check out that air filter. Uh, again, I've never looked in here, so at least at the air filter. By the way, this is the thing that when I'm driving around, you can hear making noise, so it's not the glove box anymore, it's that thing. Um, it looks like, looks like they made it easier, actually. Right here is a little lever if you will so you want to go ahead and pull that in and then it just pulls right off um, that's pretty cool however uh, there's more uh, there is a cover uh, right here you want to pull on the side of it I assume let's see if I can get some light in there okay they definitely didn't make this simple right here there are two nubs if you will and you're supposed to, it seems like, push those in uh, to be able to pull the, uh, the filter out. In other words, this one pushes up, this one pushes down, and then the door is supposed to come out. Now, obviously, due to tight spaces, I can't show you that <laughs> on camera, I don't think. I'm going to use a pair of needle nose pliers and see if I can just grab that and pull. Okay, I sort of figured it out, I guess. Let's go ahead and pull this off. Uh, the way it works, um, these kind of push together. And the only way to do that, that I can see, is with a pair of needle nose pliers. You kind of squeeze those together, and then it pulls right out. Very simple, um, but not so simple. Now, <laughs> the uh, filter itself, let's see, should be... Wow, right in here, and let's see if I can simply grab that and pull, and I can. All right, so, wow, what a what a mess, a little bit of something, something in there. Um, obviously, it's pretty clean, although there is some stuff on it, uh, and it is a, uh, looks like you can replace this part right here, just the white part. Uh, which is the filter and you can so it sits in this tray uh, and then pushes in and it's even labeled up so you really can't screw it up um, and then once you're done you just kind of slide it back in like so and what I did hopefully I don't know if you guys could see it before uh, but what I did is I just grabbed this nub right here with a pair of needle nose pliers and pulled uh, and there's basically no resistance in doing that uh, and that's it so that's how you get it out now let's see if we can't get the door back on wow what a crazy setup this is and that's it it just pushes back in like that they do not make it easy um, probably trying to get people to come in to have this done. 
Uh, that's it. Way more complicated than the old model, that's for sure. And then to put the lid back on, or the cover, you should be able to just snap that back in like that, and that is it. All right, that is it. Just a few things to check. Again, maybe monthly, something like that, in your new Tacoma. And I have to say, that air conditioning filter, they call it, I call it an in-cabin filter, uh, way more difficult than it needs to be. They could have at least given us something to grab with your fingers to pull that cap or that cover off, rather, to be able to access that area. And again, I almost get the feeling like Toyota designed it that way so that you would have to go in and pay them, I don't know, five, ten times what it should cost to be able to check that. And by the way, this is a good way to save some money. You just saw how to do it. Don't pay anybody to do it. It's not that bad. Just get yourself a pair of needle nose pliers to kind of gently squeeze in on that little uh, area I showed you and pull the cover off and then grab the filter and pull it out. Really not that hard. But I guess most people will probably have it done. Anyway, leave a comment. Let me know. You ever check this kind of stuff? I'd just be curious. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.